Hello, everyone, and welcome back to God of War. We're still making our way up our uh, icicle mountain to drop a hammer on some ice, because that's what just what we got to do, apparently. <laughs> yep. Can you guess it? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I know that these are ropes, but because of the giant frickin' head, like, and the size of the rope fibers, I still can't look at these and not just see dreadlocks or something. Uh, it just looks like braided rope to me. Yeah, but like, I don't even see a beard. You know, it's like the same color as the beard. <laughs> so, I don't know. Ah, uh, well. This is well, yes, a very... There's many, there's, many, there's many things over there, boy. <laughs> this is a very God of War set piece, though. Just... Uh, when we get to the top, anyway, yeah. Frickin' huge. Frickin' epic. Yes. Also human-shaped, because of course. Smash it with a hammer. <laughs> yeah, so... Ultimately, this part of the game's a little slow, if only because you're looking for just... Your, your quest is a little bit roundabout. Because you're slowly learning things, and it's kind of like, okay, you could skip a bunch of steps here if people have just asked the right questions. Oh, good. I've, I've been in a Dark Souls mood for a while now. Yeah, this guy's very Dark Souls-y. <laughs> so he's not, not nearly gangly enough. No, he's a little stocky, but... Like, I could see, like, I could see this guy appearing in, like, Elden Ring or something. Yeah, this is the, this is that one player who always shows up in your game to gank you. No, he's not wearing the giant Q-tip pet. True. So he's the other guy who shows up in your game to gank you. I'm actually really happy that I played most of that game offline. How was that? Yeah, me too. <laughs> um, like, I don't know, because it's, it's kind of a double-edged sword, because the one or two times I did have online enabled, I was able to, like, summon familiars, basically, and get the help of folks, which did help me with a few boss battles, and that was really fun. Uh, it's just, I also left myself open to invasion. I was like, wow, this sucks. <laughs> it's like, I don't like this anymore. I don't like, I don't really see the social aspects of Dark Souls as worth all that much, and it kind of confuses me that so many people like them. But like, uh, what do you mean? Like, uh, I mean, what is it about it that confuses you? I mean, the co-op element is fine. It's a little too, like, limited for me to really see it as something I want to do. But like, I'm not a fan of the idea of people invading other people's games to ruin their day, and I'm not sure why anyone else is a fan of that. Unless they actually are well, trolls. There's but, always going to be assholes. Yeah, I was going to say. Um, like, but, like, at the same time, the other social stuff, the messages and whatnot, all that is is an immersive breaking way for people to dick with each other. And it's like, you know, I've got this this really atmospheric, grim, dark game that I really want to get invested in as, a, as an RPG adventure experience. And... And then you pick up a scrap of paper on the floor in front of a boss, and it says, "Hello, hello, good hunter, Ligma." What? <laughs> <laughs> or it tells you that there's a secret if you jump down this hole. Of course, you're not going to do that because you're too smart, right? But, uh, but yeah, but what, what if they're right this time? <laughs> 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 oh, great! Now, now I'm just imagining like the base hunter from Bloodborne, with and like the the doll helper is like Lucy from Peanuts, and he's just running to kick the football. But in this time, it's like. A pile of blood or something. <laughs> but you like, see, I would say that you, you say that you you don't understand why someone would like take enjoyment from like invading other realms. And no, I, I say I, I how, don't. I don't see why anyone would take enjoyment from having other people invade their realms. Um, <laughs> uh, in that way, uh, I mean, I would agree. But the idea of like on the on the reverse end, I always just think of it as because of just how open ended the Souls games are, where your character can literally be whatever the hell it wants to be. It, maybe there's a role playing element to it. Oh, sure. You know, yeah, my character would totally like be. There's this kind a of role playing element to. Uh, 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 context-free jumping from one game to another and 
helping each other or hurting each other. No, that's not even an in-universe thing. <laughs> it makes zero sense. I don't really. If it doesn't make sense, it doesn't work. For can role you get play. enough in the? Can you get enough from the Souls universe to uh, properly identify what is a proper in-universe thing, though? I think so. Because honestly, there's so much not told to you in that game. But like innately when a concept is really gamey in like a, in like the sense that it's it's more of a mechanic than a story element then that concept is something that 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 you just sort of have to mentally ignore otherwise it messes with the idea of the story you know like for example, in Fallout New Vegas, you just have to quietly not think about the fact that since you took the the traits that give you extra dialogue options with both genders, you also get 10% damage boosts to all human enemies for no reason, you know? Um, and I don't really... I don't really see how you can naturally harmonize the gaminess of invading other people's single-player games with random multiplayer lobbying um, with the kind of atmosphere Dark Souls has. It just doesn't compute in my brain, and I don't like it. <laughs> it, it like I think, it's, I, I think it might be just another element of the unknown that you don't know when to expect. Because that's a big thing about the Souls games, is that because you're literally not told anything. I mean, you have to venture through everything on a whim, basically. I suppose, and I maybe that's what they were trying to count. I can see on. that. I can see that being a nice addition on subsequent playthroughs when you already know the game. I suppose, uh, but like, I don't take it any more seriously than say the magical girl costume in Silent Hill Three. So, um, no, that's just silly. <laughs> uh, but. Uh, Wait, hang on. Oh, that's a giant belt. Okay. Well, strap, but yes. Well, I mean, the strap is a thing that connects the belt to something else. I don't mean a belt like the one you wear on your pants. I just mean, like, a belt, as in a long leather strip with a strap on it. Um, sure, sure. Okay. I, I was like, oh, geez, what is that? Is that one of the walkways from God of War 2? <laughs> uh. No, there wasn't a loading screen. <laughs> True. But, okay. Man, I really, really, really need to get myself a PS5 so that I can play Elden Ring when that comes out. Good luck. Like, I like Bloodborne, but I think I, I have an easier time getting into, like, traditional fantasy set type settings than I do um, Castlevania type settings. <laughs> you know? And uh, Bloodborne is very Castlevania. Like, absurdly Castlevania. I'm not high, right? Elden Ring is not in the Tolkien mythos. No, no. no. It's, um, not. It's, it's It's inspired by it's, it. Well, it's, 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 George R.R. R. Martin is, is working on it, so... Okay. Um, there's probably going to be some elements that hearken to uh, Song of Ice and Fire, but... Okay. Oh, I, I'm trying to remember why I mean, but it's, it's probably just because the word ring was on it. <laughs> That's literally fucking it. That's probably just it. Also, oh, our guys is a Lord of the Rings game. Yes. Because <laughs> well, because there's ring. God bless the ring. Yes. That was Sauron saying. <laughs> Gotta love uh, Noah, Cloud, and Sephiroth making their way up Mount, Mount I would, Doom. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't mind a Lord of the Rings more, or Middle Earth based game that is basically a Dark Souls type game. Well, what was uh, what was the other one? What was that one that came out a couple of years ago? What, Shadows of Mordor? Or? Shadow of Mordor. That's more. Like that's Shadow the. What Hedge was that game? That's about? more like Shadow the Hedgehog ver uh, crossed over with with Assassin's Creed. That just well, more, happens. Yeah, Shadow well, in more, Middle Earth. Well, well, more Assassin's Creed. <laughs> and <thing>. it was, <laughs> at one point, Shelob had a human form for some reason, because a giant yeah, fucking a spider weird. isn't epic enough, I guess. I don't know. It was just like I could I, I could sort of see what they were trying to do with that game, but honestly the only part I like about it was the nemesis system where like if a particular orc manages to kill you or something, they get promoted in the ranks and they become sort of a rival enemy that 
you then have to take down. And uh, that sort of thing adds a nice element to the gameplay. But otherwise, it's kind of just Assassin's Creed set in Middle Earth, except it doesn't really seem to respect the tone of, of Tolkien's work very much. And I, I don't know. I, I just... I feel like it's a Middle Earth game for people who don't really like Middle Earth. <laughs> also, the protagonist is boring, but you know maybe that's just me. Oh, did you see that they're re-releasing the fucking Star Wars Force Unleashed game? The Wii version on Switch. On the, on the Switch. Yeah, no, it's the well, Wii. Also, it's, it's based on the Wii version. Yeah. So it's not three. Wait, why? Yes. Because they're dumb. <laughs> That's really weird. Why would you? Why would? Why the Wii version? Because Nintendo, I guess. Nobody liked the Wii version. <laughs> it was just a more awkward version of the good, better other version. Why did they stop? Well, turns out stopping time keeps the sun and moon from streaking across the sky. Unfortunately, it does not stop the wolves that chase them. Always looking to sink their teeth in. After that, they decided it was best to leave time alone. Wait, but, what? Hey, the... it, that's a Norse thing, but um, yeah. So elevator section and my beat him up. Who could have guessed? I was like, wait, <laughs> there are wolves chasing the sun and moon through the sky. <laughs> In Norse mythology, yes. <laughs> what are they? Here, an guitar riff. What are they? Like, at the same time. What are they? Ed, 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 Eddie? Do they think they're they're giant jawbreakers or something? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Man, every so often I hear something new about ancient mythology, and I'm like, jeez. You know, modern pop culture has nothing on the weirdness that happens in ancient myths. Back to writing before the floor collapses. It's not even a question of, oh, you wouldn't be able to get away with these stories because they're not politically correct enough in 2022. It's more no, batshit insane. It's just they're batshit insane, yes. <laughs> like... Oh, Jesus. <laughs> like, in Shinto, all the gods were born because Izanagi went down into the underworld, was so spooked by his wife's undead face that he ran back out and had to purify himself. And, like, all, like, the, the frickin' impurities turned into gods because that's how Shinto works. Everything turns into a god. Every little fucking thing turns into a god. I just got the idea of this guy like running back to his home and just drowning his eyes in bleach. <laughs> he might have at some point, and then his eyes probably turned into yeah. two separate Then the separate bleach bottle became gods. a god. The bleach yes, bottle the, the, and the both of, of his eyes and all the stuff that he washed <laughs> out of his eyes all became 20 separate gods. <laughs> I, I wish I was exaggerating, but probably that's how it would have turned out. Um... Keep writing, boy. <laughs> no, they're not. They're pretty easy, actually. Really strong name for an enemy. That's really not a problem. Hold on. Because then I got me thinking of, like, an enemy that is majorly threatening, but has, like, the most unassuming name. I mean, Cerberus. No. Say, more often than not, Cerberus lives out to well, no, well, no, stature. Well, no, I'm talking about, you know, it's a big, scary, three-headed dog of the underworld, but Cerberus in Greek basically means it's like the equivalent of, like, Spot. <laughs> okay, that I did not know. Really? Yeah. I'm talking more like, in any sort of media, a thing had a really unassuming name, but it was also like, oh, uh, <laughs> you don't want to mess with that at all. Yeah. I think I've probably got like five examples swimming in my head and I can't just choose one. Yeah. I get you. <laughs> this elevator sequence would... I thought you said Olaf for a second. This elevator sequence would make the perfect Tower of Terror. Just, you know, finally get to the top or almost to the top and then the whole thing just drops all the way back down. Kratos uh, strikes me as someone who would just spend all his time at Epcot, though. Well, he'd be drinking around the world for sure, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Jump. Yay, we made it. You ruined the point of the ride, Kratos. I hope you realize. Look, don't worry, we got fast pass. <laughs> You're gonna get sued, Kratos. <laughs> you really need someone to bounce off of him more, yeah. Just Josh and your bro. <laughs>